Welcome to Contribution of Epidemiology to Public Health. My name is Dr. Mashlata Rapolo, and I'm a medical doctor by profession. I'm currently completing my Master's of Medicine in Public Health Medicine. I decided to specialize in public health medicine because I felt so disempowered at hospital level, and I felt there was a leadership gap in health. I wanted to understand how we can provide quality and affordable health care to populations and wanted to be able to advise decision makers in health. I realized I'm a doctor for populations and not individuals. By now, you know that public health is the study of the health of groups of peoples, such as communities and populations. You also know that the health of populations depends on many different factors. In week four, we discussed disease prevention and control and environmental health, and you learned about the first triangle. Earlier this week, we discussed the second triangle of who, when, and where. Now, we turn our attention to how epidemiology contributes to public health. Remember, epidemiology is the study of the distribution and determinants of health-related states or events in specified populations and the application of this study to the control of health problems. The classical triangle of host, agent, environment describes how individuals become ill. Disease occurs when an outside agent, a vector, capable of causing disease or injury meets a host that is vulnerable to the agent. This happens in an environment that allows the agent and the host to interact. Epidemiology not only measures the relationships between the hosts and the agents in certain environments, but also analyzes the health status of the population living in that environment. The second triangle of who, when, and where is the key in describing the occurrence of disease or health conditions. As epidemiology is one of the essential tools of public health, its major aim is to contribute to fulfillment of the definition of public health as a science and art to promote health and prevent disease by organized effort of society which you have already learned about. However, to improve the health status of the population, the knowledge produced by epidemiology needs to be used and translated into interventions. In short, this is the major contribution of epidemiology to public health, to provide a scientific basis upon which we make public health policy decisions. Epidemiology helps us to focus our attention on what matters to the population by using data and evidence to identify the problem, to pick an intervention and to measure the success or failure in some cases of our interventions. Epidemiology has a long tradition and has created a wealth of accumulated experience to assess micro environments and specific agents that may impact health. There are different types of interventions tackling all three elements of the triangle. One can work with hosts and improve their immune system, increase their knowledge, and motivate behavioral change to make the hosts more resistant to agents. Public health can also inf influence the presence and distribution of agents. This is often done through traditional hygiene measures, such as provision of safe drinking water, clean air, and good waste management, but also through anti-smoking regulations, diet advice, and physical activity guidelines. Tackling the environment is a bit more difficult. If we consider the microenvironment, we are still on the host level and employ interventions like those I just mentioned. If we consider the macro environment, different in intervention methods need to be applied. This model of health is influenced by general, political, social, and environmental conditions, 
and a set of social determinants of health, which include work, education, culture, social cohesion, and individual behavior, as well as biological factors like age, sex, and genetics. It now becomes quite clear why public health professionals have different professional backgrounds. They work in different sectors and why public health requires an intersectoral collaboration in order to impact the health of populations. Already in this module, you've learned something about disease prevention and control, environmental health, as well as the social determinants of health. In addition, we discussed health systems and policy generation, which guide most of our actions. You will spend much more time on these key, key topics in the upcoming modules. There are many epidemiology journals. Please spend some time looking for one and just read the index to see the scope, breadth of epidemiology and its contribution to public health. Here are a few from the International Journal of Epidemiology. The first one, assessing longer term effectiveness of a combined household level piped water and sanitation intervention on child diarrhea, acute respiratory infections, soil transmitted helminth infection, and nutritional status, a matched cohort study in rural Odisha, India. The second one, investigating associations between rural to urban migration and cardiometabolic diseases in Malawi, a population level study. Here are two more. The third one, meat intake and risk of hepatocellular carcinoma in two large US prospective cohorts of women and men. The fourth one, exploring the bi-directional associations between loneliness and cognitive functioning over 10 years. The English Longitudinal Study of Aging. It is easy to see the breadth and depth of public health just by looking at these four titles. It is also possible to imagine, hypothesize what interventions could be designed based on the titles alone. Learn more about the language and field by looking for and reading some of the abstracts that are readily online. If you are intrigued and want to read the full paper, don't forget to work through the library page as you will be able to access full text articles from there. Many journals charge, but are free if you find them through the library page. Thank you for listening to this session, and I hope you enjoyed the session.